Welcome to the lesson of the day. And here's what it comes down to. So you've taken a black swan hit. Now I'm talking about something that when you sat down and you're trading uh, to trade or you got in front of your computer or your trading station, you would have never foreseen that the day could end up that way in terms of a loss or just the way the mechanics of what happened on the trade, completely unexpected, but it's happened and you've taken that hit. What are you supposed to do next? Now, first things first, I'm gonna pull up a chart and then everyone's gonna say, Neil, why are you showing a chart of a stock that doesn't move with a big crazy dark pool wick? But there's a reason I'm, pull I'm showing you guys this chart. So throw it up. This is obviously an example of a stock that literally doesn't move, probably four or five cents every single day, just little tiny, tiny, tiny companies being bought for 32.50 in cash. Now, the mechanics of what happened aren't that important here because that would be a video or that would be a topic all in itself and I would take a little bit more time to try to explain that. But suffice to say that this candle wick here is not a dark pool wick. This is in the pre-market and that wick up there, that was me. I took that hit at, let me just check the time in there, at 7.30. Now here's the, here's the real deal. At that particular point, you've started your day with what is the worst trade that I've had in two years. No question about it. If you were watching the live show and anyone can go back and probably check in and you can look at the tape on Thursday and say, I had no idea. I was able to come back and actually everything I traded on the show, like normal, was pretty good. I ended up pretty much green on every stock except for this one. But of course I was going to have a disastrous day and my worst day in months. You've got to ask yourself, what are you supposed to do next? And it's not unreasonable in a situation like this for most traders that you're just going to get up. And if you're not home, you're going to go home. Uh, you'll go for a walk. You'll calm yourself down. All of those things so that you don't then exacerbate it. Now, candidly speaking, in 20 years of trading, I've actually had that happen to me twice in 20 years. And putting in orders in the pre-market has actually over 20 years paid me more than it's lost. That said, that kind of a hit is really, really going to hurt. Now you'll notice anyone that watches the show, I didn't do the afternoon show. So I got through the morning, partly because a lot of it was I just went into prep mode. I just was looking at my charts. I did the morning routine. We're looking at a bunch of stocks moving and then the market treated great. And everything was fine. And then at the end of the day, at the end of the morning show is when I had to sort of take a step back and look after this and then realize, oh yeah, look at that. Look where it opened and look at it just hanging there all day. Like absolutely nothing happened. And that started to really tick me off. And so at about, at about 11 o'clock when we finished the morning show, I was peeved and I was only getting more and more upset. And I mean like angry, like I wanted to punch something. And you got to ask yourself, when that's happening, do what, should I be trading in the afternoon? The answer, no. Um, should I be sitting there taking fills and trying to teach you guys and doing the show with Sean live when I know that I'm not going to be on my A game? That's not fair to anybody, and it's not fair to myself either. So it will be filled in for me in the afternoon show. I went home, and I did 90 minutes working out so I could relieve that stress. And then, after that, I got to work. And there's two parts to that. One is to wrap your head about, around what actually happened and car, car, compartmentalize it. So you have to remember in that situation that trading stocks from market making or rebate trading on a buyout or a small cap stock, that is a completely different strategy from momentum trading. And on top of that, putting orders in the pre-market to get filled at good prices and then try to make a little bit extra money on those types of fills, that's even a subset of that strategy. So I have to compartmentalize and realize that grind that I've done, been doing for 20 years, I've got to then build solely back doing that. I've got to take that loss, put it into a bucket, and realize that style of trading is what has to build it back. And separate that from trying to hit some kind of a home run and momentum that's supposed to do it. There's just two different things. And as a trader, you've got to realize that. You can't take that hit and then just say whatever opportunity, oh, I see a good trade in NVIDIA, oh, I'll just take 100 times more shares in NVIDIA because it's the same setup because I want to make that money back. You can't do that. You've got to go back to that drawing board. Now, it's not an easy thing to do, 
but compartmentalizing, realizing that's a bit of a black swan in terms of that trading style, and you can only then grind back, going back to the basics, going back to square one. You can't just automatically start putting more risk into it. That's how you'll blow your account up. You just do what you've been able to do before on a daily basis. Now, the second thing that I made sure that I did is when I came in today, it's follow the routine. When I came in this morning, I got up at the same time, I came in at the same time, I didn't spend a lot of time dwelling on how I was going to make money on that particular stock again. I went through my charts, I went to my NVIDIAs, I went to my AMDs, I was looking at Intel, I was looking, basically all the things that I would do on a normal basis. Didn't want to change it at all. Even though a black swan event has happened, it's not, you can't go around thinking that something is dramatically changed in the market or in your routine just because you had that event happen. You've got to go back and just go to your basics. So at the end of the day, I always like to consider myself a very measured trader. You're usually not going to see me freak out about anything. Even in that moment, everyone kept coming up to me saying, oh man, you took that pretty well. And I was at a meeting with our trainees when I explained to them what happened and how they could use it to their advantage and make it a learning experience. And they're all like, oh, you handle it pretty well. And I said, you have no idea how pissed off I am right now. And I shouldn't be trading this afternoon. So I went home. And you've got to know yourself. So what I hope is that no one ever has that kind of an event happen to them. That's the ideal. That said, you never actually see something like that coming. That's the whole point, right? Like, the entirety of that move was simply me getting squeezed out. That's it. Nothing happened on that stock except me getting screwed. Nothing. And then it was right back in the same four or five cent range. So you're not really going to see something like that happen, but you can control how you react to it after. At the end of the day, once you've been screwed, that's it. You know, you can either, you can either go into a corner and cry a little bit if you have to, punch something if you have to, but nothing has changed in the overall market or with your account in that midterm. All you can do is relieve that stress and try to get back into work. But it is important to find a way to let it go and get back to business, get your head right, and do not hit the keys again until you have gotten your head right. You've got to know yourself. There is nothing wrong with something like that happening to you if you just take a break. And if that break is a couple of days or it's a week, that's fine. There's nothing weak about that. The weak person is the one that overreacts to it by revenge trading. That's mentally weak. That's going to blow up your account. That's going to have you with no second chance. So be that disciplined trader if you can. Take the time that you need and get back to your basics when you've taken a monster loss or a black swan event happens to you. There's no other approach to it. There's no secret sauce. So you got to keep it simple. That's your lesson today. How do you rebound from an exorbitant loss or a black swan event? And there's no trick to it. You've just got to follow those steps. Good luck, everybody.